Here's that attendance sheet right now. Right up in front, if anybody hasn't signed in, please take care of that. And uh, just like to review the public input guide, guidelines, uh, please limit your suggestions or comments to three minutes or less. Comments and suggestions will need to pertain to the agenda item under discussion. Personal criticism of other individuals is out of order. The Planning Commission will receive citizen input and does not respond or debate. And after the first speaker is at the podium, the next person wishing to speak may sit at the chair next to the podium and be on deck to speak next. And then when you uh, begin, please, uh, your presentation, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Next item is uh, 2.1, which is an approval of the Planning Commission minutes from February 24th of 2015. Take a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those that are in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is a conditional use and variance application by Wells Fargo to install a new monument sign at 2802 Calumet Drive. Steve? All right, um, Roger Osterman is here from RLL Sign representing Wells Fargo. At the last meeting, we tabled this matter because there was some uh, information we need to gather with uh, Ryan uh, City Engineering with regards to the improvements to Calumet Drive set for 2016? 17. 17. So we just wanted to make sure that the location of the proposed sign was going to be outside of the right-of-way area or the areas that the city needed to acquire for a part of that project and uh, based on meeting with Roger and Ryan at the site it looks like that's going to happen so what they're looking at is um, installing a new monument sign it's approximately 48 square feet eight feet high it's a double-sided illuminated monument sign and uh, the reason why they're uh, making the changes because Wells Fargo is updating their logo nationwide. So the applicant is re uh, requesting a variance to install a sign with an 11 foot setback to the property line instead of the 12 and staff was recommending approval of the proposed uh, sign permit uh, provided they meet the following conditions, <coughs> just obtain the necessary sign permits meeting the light lighting requirements. They meet the 11 foot setback and the maximum height of the sign is eight feet. Is there any public input on this item? Seeing none, Roger, would you like to add anything to the presentation? Please use your mic. Is this on? Um, yeah, uh, we met at the site. We determined the grade works, the distance from the road works with the new construction, uh, and it allows us to leave the sign in the same location. Uh, if we had to back it up at all any further, we'd end up in the driveway, which would have ended up with blacktop work and everything else. So this works for us, and it works for for the new road construction, so should be good for everybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, commissioners, any uh, questions? Let's go ahead, Mr. Alderman Bellinger. I'll just make a motion to approve with staff recommendations. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye, motion passes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> Item 2.3 is GO number 47 of 1415, amending the city of Sheboygan's comprehensive plan, future land use maps to change the land use classification of the property located at 3306 Seaman Avenue from public parks and open space to institutional and community facilities classification. Steve, we'll turn it over to you. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Mayor. Um, as the plan commission is aware, Aurora Healthcare is proposing to purchase the Field of Dreams property from the Sheboygan Area School District in order to construct and operate a new medical and office facilities from 3306 Salmon Avenue. At that February 24th meeting, the plan commission recommended approval of the pro proposed rezone from suburban residential to suburban office with two conditions and those conditions included that the uh, comprehensive plan be appropriately amended and the applicant shall take ownership by December 31st of 2016. Today the plan commission is going to be uh, reviewing the proposed amendment to the comp plan, uh, the future land use maps of the comprehensive plan to convert the Field of Dreams property from public parks and open space to institutional and community facilities. And based on the recommendation, or based on the action that took place by the plan commission at the last meeting, <coughs> staff is recommending that the plan commission make a recommendation to amend the comp plan 
uh, future land use maps from public parks and open space to institutional community, uh, institutional and community facilities. Um, so I can answer any questions. And Thank you very much. Is there any public input on that item? Hi, would you like to step up to the podium? And again, um, three minutes, and then your comments should relate to this item and the uh, change of use in the land use plan. And whoever would like to go next can uh, just take a seat next to her and be on deck for the next presentation. Thank you. Okay. Um, your, your name and address? Oh, yeah. Uh, Debbie Desmoulins, and my address is... 1704 North 35th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, and you'll have three minutes. Okay. So currently Memorial Hospital is on 7th Street, a residential neighborhood on, t um, and they, okay, yeah. And on Tuesday, March 3rd, Dave Gradner held a meeting for the current 7th Street neighbors to allay their concerns. At this meeting, the neighbors aired comments, uh, complaints from congested streets surrounding the hospital from unsightly dumpsters and an unesthetic view to the exasperatingly noisy truck deliveries starting at 5 a.m. with a frequency of nine trucks daily. This is proof that a medical facility located in a residential neighborhood is poorly tolerated. Neighbors don't sleep well and can easily, uh, cannot easily enter or leave their homes. Neighbors were concerned that Aurora would abandon the 7th Street Hospital, leaving an empty building. One neighbor said, when you transfer the hospital to the Field of Dreams, will you run a highway through Maywood? Graymner replied, no, Maywood is forever. But the man said the Field of Dreams was supposed to be forever as well. Graymner only committed to staying at the memorial site for 10 years. He repeated that Aurora was landlocked at the current location. Aurora's destination for the hospital is the Field of Dreams because they sketch pl places, their sketch places the surgery center on the north side, leaving a place for a hospital on the south side of the Field of Dreams. Gravener said that Aurora still has, plan, has to pass by DNR approval and city zoning, but he told the neighbors that Aurora was committed to staying in Sheboygan, that they would find another site in the city if their current project doesn't pass DNR stipulations and city ordinances. Therefore, the city will have the same tax revenues regardless of where Aurora bills, builds. Aurora does not intend to leave the city. So my question is, why lose a popular community park? when the current Aurora neighbors have numerous complaints about the hospital's inevitable activity, especially when there is no need. Let's not make the same mistake twice of placing a hospital in a residential area. The Field of Dreams was built with a 92,000 DNR grant on the condition that it stay a recreational facility forever. Transferring it requires the conversion be necessary and meet or exceed its current recreational amenities. To make this truly a win-win-win, let's find Aurora, a south side property commercially zoned that does not take an existing recreational facility to provide medical facilities on the south side as well. This way we will keep all of our existing green space and still retain Aurora's services balancing the medical and recreational needs for both the north and south sides of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. My name is Matt Brush. I live at 3320 Geely Avenue. Go, please go ahead, Matt. You'll I live in the neighborhood minutes. where the proposed medical facility is going to occur. And I just want to tell you that I'm really excited. I'm really excited because I heard all across that the uh, parks in si the city of Sheboygan are available for commercial properties. There's some uh, landlocked businesses in the uh, commercial areas that would like to expand as well. And I would just like to say businesses like Wigwam, uh, businesses like JL French used to be, they'd like to expand into nearby parks. They're interested in the Volrath property. They're expanding into areas like Cole Park. They'd be like to expand into uh, Moose Park, N Park, Roosevelt Park. These are, neighbors where, these are neighborhoods where you all live, and I know where most of you live, and this is parks that are your neighborhood parks. So these businesses are also excited about this, and this spot rezoning that we're proposing doing to uh, accommodate Aurora seems really nice on the face of it. We get to develop a south side property with money that they're providing, and they're a multi-million slash billion dollar business, and they have money to throw around. Uh, we have property that we just inherited. We have three properties that are paid for, they're clear. We own the Field of Dreams as taxpayers. We own the property where the Mung Gardens are, and we now own the Bootson property, which was a wonderful gift that we received from that family. We own these. We can develop them as we need them. We can improve the sites that we currently own. If there's problems with the Field of Dreams Park, the soccer people had said, 
it would be much easier to spend money to improve that park and to provide better soccer fields for the kids that enjoy that park. Again, we own it. We don't have to make any accommodations. It would be very inexpensive. It's like buying a used car. It's a good property. We've enjoyed it. We could pass it down for another generation. It's only been there for one generation. Uh, looking for land. Aurora's been looking for land for quite a while. According to them, they've been looking for expansion for 20 years. They need to make a move. This opportunity just presented itself when the Bootson property became available. If they've been looking for 20 years, we've been expanding to the north, the area up by Menards. They've missed the Kmart property. There's probably been an opportunity at the mall area. There's been land available. They haven't made a move. This is an opportunity they've jumped on because it requires the least amount of financial impact on them. They don't have to build an off-ramp. They don't have to build over a railroad trestle. They don't have to do any infrastructures. They don't even have to cut down any trees. It's easy for them to do. It's easy to wreck a neighborhood uh, by putting some business or a corporation in it. There's a reason we have zoning. We could put whatever business we wanted over there. There's been many opportunities for other businesses to grow and develop into our neighborhood, but it's been designated a park for a good reason. I'm not sure why there's a sudden change of heart and why that park isn't uh, considered to be uh, preserved like the rest of them. But I propose that if we start with this, we should look excuse at Maywood. Me, excuse me, your three minutes are up. My three are up? Yep. Can I just finish my thought, please? Just wrap up, please. Okay. I, I propose that we look at uh, developing Maywood and the other parks. The financial impact would be great for this city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Please come forward. Anyone else can take the on deck circle? My name is Linda Shimon, 1326 North 27th Street, Sheboygan. Okay, Linda, you'll have three minutes. Okay. The history of Sheboygan is that industry and commercial buildings were kept in a separate part of the city. What are, what are we doing now? What we are doing now is a major departure from that history. Is that the legacy that we want? I read a study that the more hospital capacity in an area, the higher the cost of health care. Aurora already has more than two clinics in a hospital with other agencies serving our area as well. With all the property Aurora now has, we can speculate that they intend not to just replace, but to add on. That is what Aurora is doing all across the state. Again, do you want your legacy to be that? Because of you, the people in Sheboygan, in the Sheboygan area will have higher medical costs. Higher medical costs could eat up any benefit of jobs created by this deal. How many jobs will be added? Few doctors because doctors will be shifted from existing facilities, both Aurora and others. That means the new jobs will be mostly custodial and in the records departments. Have you analyzed the wage scales of these, of these jobs and the working conditions? Will they pay these workers enough so they don't have to apply for government assistance? How much property tax is the city given from all the Aurora facilities right now, especially the clinic and the hospital? Can citizens get these records to verify that we really are receiving tax revenue? One of the enticements cities generally offer to businesses to build in the city are secret tax breaks. With all the secrecy that has gone on with this campaign, how do we know that we are not giving Aurora tax breaks? What free services will Aurora be required to do for for free? When I researched other new hospital constructions, everyone had a provision that they had to provide some free service to the community. Is that what Aurora is going to do here? What governmental agency is overseeing the South Side property, not the Butson Farm, but the other one they admitted that they had um, near railroad tracks or whatever? We have the constitutional right of due process of law. That means we can request more time for investigation into these arrangements. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Susan Sunquist, 2338 West Shelley Court. Welcome. You'll have three minutes then. Thank you. I would like to say that many other people have a lot more information than I do. They've researched it, spend a great deal amount of time, and I applaud those people who are trying to save the field of dreams for the community of Sheboygan. 
I am speaking from a personal aspect. I am a special education teacher in the Sheboygan Area School District. In our fifth grade social studies unit that I'm preparing for now, we are studying the trail of tears. My special education students understand how the colonist did what was best, they thought, for this country by moving the Indians out. Took their green space, took their land, took what they appreciated, took what they worked hard for. I can't help but think that what is going on here is extremely similar. What is best for the community is that really another hospital next to another hospital, next to a surgery center, next to another surgery center? Is that really helping the city of Sheboygan, the community? Aurora has talked about making services available for the students, or the students, I just came from teaching, for the citizens, that it be easily accessible. Easily accessible does not put all facilities in one area. You distribute the facilities among the city. Aurora talks about patients being able to take the bus. If you're having surgery, you do not take a bus to have surgery and hop back on the bus to get back home. You have to make arrangements for someone to drive you there. So the argument that it's available for students, or for, for citizens, I'm sorry, on a bus does not make sense to me. I ask that you consider, do the needs of Aurora outweigh the needs of the children and the citizens of Sheboygan? Like the colonists thought that their needs were more important than the Indians. Please consider that when you make your decision. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa Brush from 3320 Geely Avenue. And I just want to simply say that I don't think Mrs. Bootson's plan of giving us the land and having more screen space was to destroy another park. That was absolutely not her intention. Her intention was to give us more green space and have more park space for our community. So why are we destroying a park that thousands of people use every single year for numerous things? And I know, uh, Mr. Jones, that they don't use them for football. I realize you're on the board for that, but I know my kid's usually at <laughs> um, Kiwanis, but, or sometimes if it's not too wet, north or south high. But why are we destroying a park? That was not her intention. She was giving us that space to add to our green space and our parks and our community, not destroy it, please. Let Aurora build somewhere else and preserve our parks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Please go ahead, Scott. I'm going to use a microphone here. That'll be fine. <clears throat> Three minutes, Scott. Scott Levandusky, 2201 Erie Avenue. And I'm not one of the neighbors of the Field of Dreams, but I am a citizen of Sheboygan. And unlike uh, many of the Aurora people that have spoken, I do live in the city of Sheboygan. And I want to keep the Field of Dreams for the kids the way it is now. And I have some questions that probably nobody has asked before, but how much is this really going to cost the city taxpayers we were already told 800,000 would have to be added above what Aurora is going to pay. But there's a lot of stuff that has not been mentioned that's going to be required. Uh, at the meeting at Cooper School a couple weeks ago, somebody from Aurora said that we're going to need traffic signals on Taylor Drive at Geely Avenue or Salmon Avenue, or probably most likely both, and maybe a roundabout. Who's going to pay for that? It's going to be city taxpayers. On the south end of the field across the street where they want to move everything, there's contaminated soil from the city dumping stuff there. 
I'm sure the school district and Aurora are going to say the city's got to pay to clean up that contaminated soil. On the south side, by the property where they want to move everything, for three tenths of a mile, there's no sidewalk. So again, that's going to be another city expense that nobody's brought up. And I have heard Aurora say that this is the only possible site they can build on. Yet I have not heard them mention why that is the only site and the other ones do not meet their needs. And how do we know that everything that is promised to the kids in the new sections of the parks are actually going to be given to the kids? In New York City, they have a park in the middle of the city named Central Park. With the price of land in New York, look how much money the city of New York could make by selling that land and turn it into development for something. We're asking the same thing by Aurora. Is we don't care what the parks are. We just want the land. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? David, please step forward. Uh, Dave Grabner, uh, 3618 North 6th Street, Sheboygan. Well, three minutes, David, thank you. Um, there were several questions answered and I, I, I asked, and I want to just make sure we're answering those questions. I'll, I'll start with the um, uh, first, first question was around our building a hospital. We are not, there's no plans to build a hospital. There's no plans to build a hospital. There's no plans to build a hospital. Um, what I think the neighbor discussion that you heard was uh, something that several aldermen talked to us about because they heard concerns from their neighbors around what's the plan at the existing hospital. So I reached out to our neighbors, as I've done periodically since I've been the president of the hospital. And so the discussion with the neighbors really is to understand, help them understand what the project is, help them be reassured that we're not going to lead a white elephant in their neighborhood. Okay, that's, that's the concern that we heard. And so I think the 10, the 10 days was taken out of, con 10 years was taken out of context because what I talked about is the investment that we're making in our current facility. We've, we've spending $11 million with, uh, since, there, since Aurora made the approval for the, um, for the outpatient facility, we've um, invested $11 million in replacing our uh, windows in adding fire um, uh, protection, assuring that we're uh, updating our current facilities. Just signed off today on another $1.2 million in a new call light system for our nursing staff, and we're gonna continue to make investment in that facility. Um, and we're also gonna continue to work with the neighbors as we've reached out to the field of doing neighbors to make sure that we understand the issues. Part of the concern that was raised at the meeting is because we've had so much construction, there's a lot of debris and it's the management of that that we wanted to hear how we were doing and what we could improve that. Um, there were some also some questions related to the jobs and the number of jobs. So I wanna make sure you have the facts. We're talking 37 new jobs. Seven of those are physician. The added tax base to, or the, uh, the annual salary dollars is three or $5.2 million annually to our community with the increase that we're making. We pay $403,000 in taxes. Uh, the clinic does that as part of the nonprofit. We're estimating another 200,000 uh, associated with this project. Um, someone mentioned the, uh, uh, east side um, contamination uh, as part of the condition of sale and um, with the west property we we are committed uh, to work with uh, the the school to assure that we're meeting all uh, needs that we have around the the fields and making sure that's safe um, so that's part of the condition of the sale and um, and then I think regarding adding or subtracting the number of uh, uh, parkland to our to our city as uh, they've mentioned uh, the school has mentioned we're adding 40 total so the Butson farm the relocation of uh, the east parcel uh, property and additional uh, use of that 
uh, is adding 40 acres to the, to the city's use. I don't know if there's other questions that the uh, uh, Planning Commission has. We'll get to that later then, David. Thank you for that presentation. <clears throat> Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, then we'll return the uh, conversation to the uh, commissioners. Commissioners, did you have any questions or comments or motions? Alderman Bellinger. I move to approve uh, the motion with staff recommendations. Subject to staff recommendations. I'll second it. Thank you for that motion and support. That motion is before us. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to item 2.4, which is RO 255 of 1415, submitting a communication from CVS store number 10549, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, being assigned and notarized certified survey map. Steve. Um, Plan Commission remembers in June, we approved the conditional use permit for CVS to construct a new pharmacy at Erie and 14th. And a couple of conditions required them to combine all of the 10 lots into one, light, one lot, and then they were also dedicating a portion of property at the southeast corner along 14th Street in Erie for a dedicated right-hand turn lane. The CSM is uh, basically creating the one lot and dedicating that property to uh, the city. So anytime the city is receiving a dedication of property, it's gotta come to the plan commission and council to receive that dedication. So staff is recommending approval of the CSM. Thank you. Is there any questions or motions? Move to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second on the floor. Any questions on the motion? Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next we is adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 We, pay, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much.